Good morning, folks. We've got a slate of eye candy, electric climate dynamics, cosmic magnetism, and the first chemical changes on the sun towards Micronova may have just been confirmed. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were calmer than the day before. The small eruptions died back down as the filaments in active regions progress, and we begin to see the latest real sunspot group appear on the north. It's the bright complex of arches seen here in 171 angstroms. The group contains multiple sunspots with at least one of considerable size, and given that the big one is not the clear leader in the group, this one probably has at least one more eruption in her. Eyes open. Eye candy up next. Processed footage from Bennu of the touchdown and asteroid sample maneuver. Scientifically masterful, then anxiety-inducing as I've seen too many movies about stuff they bring back to Earth from somewhere else. Up next, NASA put together a run of the 2017 hurricanes, but also included key aerosol classes of dust, sea salt, and smoke. In addition to seeing the interactions and, frankly, being a wonder to view, this is the season that got surged by major solar activity, strongest solar event in 12 years, and we got Irma, Jose, and Maria in the timeline between the flaring and the geomagnetic storm subsidence. Fun little note here. They want to send robots to make a telescope on the moon out of a crater. Outside of the practicality of the matter, I say, cool, let me know when it's done, and good luck. Huge consortium of top researchers around the world could have used some luck, as they didn't find solar neutrinos from a major flaring event. They also went back and debunked the 1991 event as well, solar neutrino production and flaring under major question. Up next is something very cool. They spotted arching jets and wanted to know if powerful, undetected magnetic fields were to blame. First try, boom. They managed to completely recreate the form by actually incorporating the magnetic fields into the model. Many don't do this because it's very complex, basically takes you up a class of supercomputer needed to run it. But alas, a gorgeous simulation that finally matches a cosmic observation, and all they needed were the fields. Up next, we're talking space to ground, rapid forcing, but it's not the global electric circuit. It's the reverberation and harmonics of the alphanic resonance in the ionosphere due to space weather impact, and those harmonics are seen at ground level. It's important to note that while the ionosphere component of the global electric circuit uses atmospheric connections through pressure cells, this here is more like the geomagnetic storm induction. The atmosphere between you and space is irrelevant, the resonances hit everything. Let's get a quick one on lightning here. Excellent study on electric fields of thunderstorms showed how they try to find equilibrium and non-homogeneous character helps create the major flashes and makes them more powerful. Well, how do you create that heterogeneity? If you can understand that in the cosmic ray cascade of particles hitting every inch of the atmosphere every second, the dozen or so studies on cosmic ray lightning triggers now go a bit beyond the statistics. Last but not least, folks, it was a few months ago we shared this paper, the identification of the sun's magnetic field changing and it causing a chemical change in the atmosphere. This is not only the core sphere in our system taking a magnetic shift, but the solar atmosphere, the corona, is where the micronova shell builds, blocks light and solar wind, and eventually the pressure blasts off the thin outer layer. Today, we're looking at helium in the corona again and we not only get confirmation of the chemistry, but we quantify it as well. Based on the Genesis mission in the 90s, they pegged the helium-hydrogen ratio at 0.05. Today, they've moved that number to 0.082, a 64% increase in the helium ratio. This paper has a number of other elements charted as well if you're curious, but for most observers, it immediately refocuses the mind back to the Earth evidence, the stories from our ancestors, the modern observations of the solar system in both astrophysics and galactic plasma physics. The sun is due in the 3,000, 6,000, and 12,000 year blast cycle ranges. We greatly appreciate your support. Whether it's our playlists or our books, there continues to be motivation to wrap our heads around the cyclical catastrophe unfolding again now. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.